You know all about the Old Faithful Geyser at Yellowstone National Park, but this is even more dramatic. It's called a hydrothermal explosion, and as Les Trent tells us, you definitely want to keep your distance. Run, 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 run! You can hear me screaming, run, run, run. That was my only thought, to get as far away from that place. So I, was, I kept saying that to my kids so they don't stop. Natural systems uh, can can throw us a lot of curveballs. A lot of things can happen that we're not really ready for. Yellowstone National Park hides a formidable force beneath its surface, the massive Yellowstone supervolcano. With the zone just evacuated as the volcanic threat looms closer, one must wonder, how soon until the calm breaks and chaos erupts? Join us as we delve into the unfolding drama, where nature's untamed power threatens to rewrite history. Unveiling the supervolcano lurking beneath the park's beauty. For years, scientists have known that there's a massive volcanic system hidden beneath Yellowstone National Park, called the Yellowstone Supervolcano. At first, people saw the park as just a place with unique geothermal features, but now it's understood to be a potential volcanic threat that could impact entire continents. Yellowstone is a popular destination for visitors from around the world, Known for its colorful hot springs, steaming vents, serene natural scenery, and diverse wildlife. However, a recent scary incident, where a bison attacked a father and his child, reminded everyone of the park's untamed nature. But Yellowstone is more than just a beautiful place to visit. It's home to an active supervolcano beneath the surface. The park's famous wildlife and stunning geysers draw people in, but the real story is what's happening underground. Recently, a hydrothermal explosion led to part of the park being closed, sparking debates about the possibility of a volcanic eruption. Just a week after this explosion, concerns grew even more, raising the question of whether a global catastrophe could be looming. On July 23, 2024, Yellowstone National Park was evacuated due to the potential danger of an eruption from the caldera. A shocking hydrothermal blast occurred, far more powerful than the famous Old Faithful Geyser. This blast was a stark reminder of the unpredictable power of the forces at work beneath the park. But then, things took an even more troubling turn. The explosion at Biscuit Basin, known for its beautiful hot springs, was caused when water beneath the ground rapidly turned to steam, building up pressure until it erupted. The blast sent water, steam, and rocks flying into the air, damaging a nearby walkway. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but it left many wondering about the real dangers lurking below. Despite reassurances from park authorities that such events are normal and unpredictable, the fear of the supervolcano beneath the park has led some visitors to reconsider their trips. The recent events have fueled speculation about increasing volcanic activity, raising concerns about a potential catastrophic eruption. Yellowstone has experienced three major eruptions in its history. The recent minor events, along with geological shifts and earthquakes in the area, have some people worried that another big disaster could be on the way. Despite these fears, Scientists at the Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory are telling the public that there's no immediate threat of an eruption. They say that the current volcanic activity is consistent with what's been seen in the past, with no signs of an impending disaster. This raises questions about how scientists can stay so calm when there seem to be so many warning signs. To understand why scientists aren't worried, we need to take a closer look at the Yellowstone caldera, exploring its features and understanding the real risks it poses. The volcanic system beneath Yellowstone is one of the largest on Earth, and it's shown signs of massive eruptions in the past. These huge explosions shaped the landscape we see today. According to experts at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the Yellowstone Caldera, a large crater-like formation, was created by a series of these enormous eruptions, with the most recent one happening about 600,000 years ago. Recently, Steamboat Geyser, which is even taller and more powerful than Old Faithful, has become active again. This area, about 30 by 45 miles wide, sits on top of two huge magma reservoirs. These reservoirs form a complex underground system. The shallower one lies between 5 and 20 kilometers below the surface, stretching about 90 kilometers long and 30 kilometers wide. It contains over 10,000 cubic kilometers of mostly thick, slow-moving magma, 
About 20% of this upper chamber is molten rock, while the rest is even denser magma. Deeper down, between 20 to 50 kilometers underground, there's an even larger chamber filled with more magma. The lower chamber heats the upper one, and they're connected by a network of channels and cracks called dikes. The entire system is fueled by a plume of hot rock that rises from deep within the Earth's mantle, bringing both heat and molten rock closer to the surface. An eruption could happen if the temperature and pressure within these chambers reach critical levels. A group of volcanologists, led by Michael Poland, is using thermal cameras to monitor a 50-meter-wide area of magma. This hidden pool of molten rock powers Yellowstone's famous geothermal features like hot springs, geysers, mud pots, and fumaroles, making it one of the most thermally active places in the world. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, established after an explosive incident at Biscuit Basin, is managed by Michael Poland and consists of nine different agencies. These experts monitor volcanic and seismic activities in Yellowstone and report on them regularly. While historical data reveals only three major eruptions in the last two million years, suggesting infrequent significant events, there's no current indication of increased volcanic activity. A large eruption, if it occurs, could be globally devastating, but such an event is not imminent. To reach these conclusions, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory uses various techniques to detect changes in volcanic behavior. Teams of geologists use seismometers to detect small earthquakes, which can signal changes underground. They also use devices called digitizers to gather and analyze this data, ensuring that any significant changes are noticed and investigated quickly. Monitoring earthquakes is really important because they can be a sign that magma is moving underground. As magma rises, it can cause more earthquakes, which shows that things are getting more active beneath the surface. Yellowstone does have thousands of these small quakes each year, but most of them are just the Earth's plates shifting naturally. It's not necessarily a sign that the volcano is getting ready to erupt. However, something interesting has happened recently. The quakes started occurring more frequently, every half hour instead of every 40 minutes, indicating some changes below ground. Scientists monitor Yellowstone for ground movement using GPS and radar, observing if the ground swells or sinks to detect magma movements. However, these changes alone don't predict an eruption unless they occur frequently and together. They also track gases from the caldera, and current gas levels are normal, indicating no increase in volcanic activity. Additionally, they check the park's geysers and hot springs for changes in temperature, chemistry, and flow rate. Currently, these hydrothermal features appear normal, showing no signs of underground disturbances. Yellowstone's seismic silence and the low chance of eruption. Experts study past volcanic eruptions to try to predict when the next one might happen. So far, all the data suggests that there's little chance of a big eruption anytime soon. The current seismic monitoring tools haven't detected any of the usual warning signs, like major ground shifts, lots of earthquakes, or high levels of gas. If there were a real danger of an eruption, nearby states like Idaho, Montana, Nevada, and Nebraska would be getting ready for a huge mess of ash and debris. But there haven't been any evacuation plans, which further supports the idea that an eruption isn't expected soon. Interestingly, during dry periods, geysers like Old Faithful have even stopped erupting, showing how environmental conditions can affect geothermal activity. This reassures the experts, and it should reassure us too, that an eruption isn't likely in the near future. This doesn't mean that the threat is completely gone. The Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory continues to remind us that while a major eruption is unlikely right now, it's still possible in the future. They stay vigilant, constantly checking for any signs that could indicate a change. The possibility of a volcanic eruption from Yellowstone Caldera is low, but not zero which underscores the need for vigilance. An eruption could impact not just local areas, but globally. Clear signs would precede such an event, including a significant increase in the number and intensity of earthquakes in the area, indicating magma moving toward the surface. These major quakes would be detectable far beyond the park. Additionally, swelling of the ground above the magma chambers, detectable by GPS and satellite technology, 
alongside increased heat and gas emissions, would further signal an impending eruption. If Yellowstone erupted, its geysers and hot springs would become more active and new gas vents would form. The eruption would release massive amounts of ash and gases, creating a large atmospheric column and covering North America in ash. This would disrupt transportation, damage buildings, and pose widespread health risks. The sulfur released could cool the globe, causing a volcanic winter that impacts agriculture and economies. Near the eruption, deadly flows of gas and volcanic material would destroy everything. While the chances of such an eruption happening are low, the Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory continues to monitor the area closely. They remind us that while a major eruption is unlikely right now, it's still a possibility for the future. So they stay vigilant, constantly checking for any signs that could indicate a change. These fiery flows, known as pyroclastic flows, would cause immense damage, carrying huge rocks and a torrent of volcanic mud across the land. They would make the area around Yellowstone completely uninhabitable. The park we know and love would be unrecognizable, devastated by the massive seismic activity of the eruption. The park's rich ecosystem and unique landscape would be drastically altered, with the effects reaching far beyond Yellowstone. Air travel and food supply chains across North America would be disrupted, and global trade would also feel the impact. While the consequences of a major eruption at Yellowstone would be severe, the likelihood of it happening soon is very low. Advances in volcanic research allow for more accurate predictions by studying past eruptions from systems like Yellowstone. Continuous monitoring helps scientists estimate the timing and impact of potential supervolcanic events. Yellowstone has had three major eruptions in the last two million years. The largest was the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, which released over 2,000 cubic kilometers of material and had profound climate and environmental impacts. A similar event today would be the largest in recorded history due to Yellowstone's size. Comparing this to the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815 gives us an idea of what could happen after a Yellowstone eruption. Tambora sent volcanic ash across vast areas, changing weather patterns and covering entire continents with ash. If Yellowstone erupted similarly, it would blanket large parts of North America and even affect faraway places. The 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo offers another comparison. That eruption caused global temperatures to drop for years, hinting at how much more severe the climate impact could be if Yellowstone erupted. The resulting volcanic winter would block out sunlight, making it hard for crops to grow and leading to the collapse of many ecosystems. In 2010, a volcano in southern Iceland erupted after nearly two centuries of dormancy, capturing the world's attention. This event reminded us of the powerful and disruptive nature of volcanoes. So while there is a possibility of a major eruption at Yellowstone, ongoing scientific research and improvements in volcanic monitoring are crucial for predicting and minimizing the impacts of such a massive event. Still, the most alarming part was yet to unfold. Despite the low chances of an eruption happening soon, the potential for a cataclysmic event at Yellowstone is always present. Scientists remain vigilant, using all available tools to keep an eye on any changes, and they continue to develop ways to better understand and respond to the threats posed by supervolcanoes like Yellowstone. The volcanic eruption in Iceland caused chaos for over two months, seriously disrupting daily life. If Yellowstone's caldera were to erupt, we could see similar, if not worse, effects. During the Iceland eruption, Volcanic ash made air travel too dangerous, grounding all flights in the area. The ash and gases also caused acid rain, which polluted water sources and made the soil toxic, damaging agriculture. Recovering from such a disaster could take more than a decade, with transportation and trade across North America facing major disruptions. But this wasn't the worst part. Understanding these potential signs and consequences leads us to ask, what are the Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory and the United States Geological Survey doing to prepare for such a catastrophic event. Let's take a closer look at the safety measures they have in place. Advanced Technologies at Work in Yellowstone's Caldera The United States Geological Survey and the Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory have set up strong systems to prepare for the risks, including a possible eruption from the caldera. 
Even though the chances of such an event are low, they maintain a network of seismometers to monitor earthquake activity and magma movement. They rely on real-time data to make decisions and share this information with the public when necessary. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Advanced technology is used to detect changes in the ground, like swelling or sinking, which can show if magma is moving closer to the surface or retreating deeper underground. Many monitoring stations track levels of gases like sulfur and carbon dioxide, which can signal increased volcanic activity. If something unusual is detected, researchers are alerted right away. Regular updates and warnings about volcanic hazards are provided by the United States Geological Survey to keep the public informed and ready to act if volcanic activity increases. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory has detailed plans for emergency evacuation routes, public shelters, and other communication methods. These plans cover different possible scenarios because predicting exactly how such a massive event might unfold is very challenging. Detailed strategies are in place to manage air travel during an eruption, including rerouting or canceling flights to keep passengers safe. Stockpiles of essential supplies like food, water, and medical resources are also maintained to support communities that might be affected. Ongoing research into Yellowstone's geological behavior helps improve the ability to predict and assess the risks. Considering the potential global effects of an eruption, International cooperation is essential. This means sharing important data between countries and pooling resources to fund response strategies, which can help reduce the economic and social impact. Community involvement is also crucial, with training drills designed to prepare residents for the first signs of an eruption, making sure everyone is ready to handle the challenges that might come. These comprehensive preparedness measures highlight the importance of active participation in drills and emergency exercises. By getting involved, civilians can better respond to a volcanic disaster, helping to protect lives and resources when faced with such a powerful force of nature. Being prepared for whatever nature throws at us is really important, especially when we think about the powerful forces under Yellowstone National Park. With resources like the United States Volcano Hazards Program, there's guidance on what to do before, during, and after a big volcanic eruption. While the United States Geological Survey and the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory see a potential eruption as something we can manage, NASA considers it a much bigger threat, like an asteroid strike, because it could have serious global effects. NASA has been keeping a close eye on the Yellowstone caldera using their advanced satellites. They've noticed that the magma chambers under the park are slowly filling with hot magma. If this magma reaches a critical point, it could cause an eruption. Although the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory hasn't reported any immediate dangers, NASA has been thinking ahead and has come up with a plan to try to prevent this from happening. NASA's plan involves cooling the massive magma chamber beneath Yellowstone to keep it from reaching eruption-triggering temperatures. The idea is pretty bold. NASA wants to drill a series of deep wells around the park and pump cold water down into the ground. The water would absorb heat from the surrounding rocks and magma, then be brought back to the surface. Not only could this stop an eruption, but it might also generate clean energy for nearby areas. At first, this plan got a lot of attention because it showed a new way to tackle one of nature's biggest threats. After all, this is the same agency that put people on the moon. Such a plan could help scientists learn more about volcanic activity and maybe even prevent future eruptions around the world. Even though this plan was introduced over four years ago, the government hasn't provided the resources NASA needs to make it happen. There are many reasons for this. For one, the technology needed to drill into the magma chamber would have to withstand extremely high temperatures and pressures, which current drilling equipment can't handle. Plus, cooling the magma would require pumping massive amounts of water for thousands of years, which is a huge undertaking. Nevertheless, what happened next is even more concerning. Messing with active magma chambers is very risky. The drilling could accidentally trigger the very eruption it's trying to prevent by changing the pressure inside the chamber. It could also cause major environmental problems, like earthquakes and contaminated groundwater, which would harm local ecosystems and make water unsafe to drink. 
the financial costs of this project would be enormous. Developing the right technology and dealing with the environmental risks would cost far more than the energy benefits the project might provide. While NASA's idea is forward-thinking and could potentially solve a big problem, actually making it work is another story. The technical, financial, and environmental challenges are huge, and with what we know now about volcanoes, there's no guarantee it would work safely or at all. So for now, this plan remains just an idea. Maybe in the future, as technology improves, it could become more realistic. But for now, the best thing we can do is keep monitoring the situation closely and be ready to respond if we see any signs of increased activity without jumping to conclusions about an imminent disaster. If the ground beneath Yellowstone is shaking and the magma chambers are filling, could we be underestimating the volcano's threat? Like and subscribe for more.